Okay, so in this final video for the MP0 section, we're gonna talk about how to submit your code. Now this is really important to get right because I'm assuming that you wanna get credit for uh, completing the machine project. Now, there's a couple of important things to note here. Um, and as we go, I'm gonna kind of try to explain what submitting isn't. But in general, until you see the score that you think you have earned on the website, you have not correctly submitted your code. And hopefully you start this process early enough that we can help you if you run into common mistakes. But until you see the score on the website, you are not done. So I'm over here on the website um, at the, this is the MP0 scores will be shown in several places, but I'm at the bottom of um, the continuing MP0 lesson. And I can see that I haven't submitted any scores. And at this point, I have a zero on the MP. Now, again, whatever you see locally from you know the, the greater output does not mean anything until it appears on our website. Now, the good thing is it doesn't take very long for the score to appear once you submit, and the process is straightforward. So let's go through it together. So in order to submit, you first have to commit your changes. Now, we're using a version control system in this course called Git. Git is something that as you continue on through our computer science program, you will learn a lot more about. Git is an incredibly powerful tool that enables collaboration between multiple people working on a project and all sorts of other things. But for the purposes of this class, we're using Git largely as a submission system. However, Git does allow you to do something important, which is frequently when you're working on software, you know, you might think about like editing a file, like a, a, a Word document, people still use those, I guess, or some other type of file. You know, you save your work. The problem is in software, a lot of times our work is distributed across multiple files that are all part of a project. And so we want a way to save our work across the entire project. In Git, this is known as a commit. A commit records forever, uh, assuming that you save these commits, which we do and we'll actually also push them to github.com so they'll live there as well. But a Git commit records the state of your entire project at a particular point in time. And this can be very useful for tracking the changes that you make to a project. Sometimes you break something and then you want to figure out what change, you want to go backwards, but it also serves as a history of the work that one or more people have done on a particular project. Um, okay, so in order to start the submission process, we're going to, now the only change I've made at this point, I'm going to run the grader. Um, the only change I've made at this point is I've added my ID to ID.txt. Um, but just doing that, you'll see, is going to earn me 10 points because there are no check cell errors in the code. So let's make sure we get those 10 points up onto the website together. And then as you complete the other parts of the MP, you'll go through the same process. But I want to reiterate, until you see your score on the website, you have not earned that score. It doesn't matter if you committed and you forgot to push or if you ran the local grader and didn't commit or whatever, until you see the score on the website, that, or put it this way, the score on the website is the score you've earned. That's a, maybe another way to put it, right? So if you think you got 100, but the website says 10, you're gonna have 10. Um, and that's just gonna be uh, the, the, the way things are gonna go. All right, so let's go ahead and, and, and start the commit process. So in Android Studio, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, I'm gonna go up here and open up the Git menu and then hit commit. Now, what this does right now in Android Studio is it opens up this other window that I can also open and close by just clicking over here. So this is the commit dialog. Now, what Git will show me when I start a commit is what are the changes that I made to the repository? So at this point, as promised, the only change I've made is to id.txt, but that's fine. That's all I wanna commit because just making that change is gonna earn me 10 points. Now, I'm gonna, now when we record changes to our repository, we have the opportunity to enter a commit message. It's not uh, never too early to get in the habit of writing good commit messages. These don't have to be super long, but it's nice if they're descriptive, right? So. This is useful for other people who are working with you so they have a sense of like what change, what's a summary of all the different changes that happened at this particular commit, right? A commit always brings some changes to the code that lives in that repository. What's like a high level overview of what happened? So in this case, I'm gonna say added my ID to ID.txt because that's really all I've done. Now there's two options down here. There's commit 
and there's commit and push. Now, when you commit and get, what happens is it stores that information on your device. But that's not sufficient to allow us to grade it. In order to grade it, you have to make sure it gets to github.com. And so pushing, what pushing does is it takes the changes from your local repository and it sends them to github.com. It essentially synchronizes them with github.com. There's a couple of reasons for doing this. A lot of people do this because they use that to share code with others. So if I'm working on a project, I make some changes locally, I push to GitHub, and then somebody else will be able to retrieve those changes. The other reason is it also serves as a form of backup. So if my computer crashes or dies or the hard drive, all the contents of the hard drive are you know, ransomed by somebody who wants me to pay Bitcoin or something like that, I have a copy of all the changes I made to the code on github.com and so I can get a new machine and just clone the repository again and everything will be there. So this is also useful if your machine breaks during the semester or if you need to switch machines. As long as you've been pushing to GitHub regularly, which you have to in order to submit, you're golden. Your changes are on github.com and you can always go back and find them when you need to use another machine. If you want to work on two machines at the same time, Ask about that on the forum because we'll have to help you with the workflow there because that can cause problems, but it's perfectly doable. It's something that I do all the time. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit commit and push. So it's gonna do two things. It's gonna commit these changes. It's also gonna send them to github.com. All right, so let's go ahead and hit commit and push. Uh, this brings up this additional dialog. Uh, again, it's sort of telling me what's happening here. It's because a, a push can potentially carry multiple commits. In this case, there's only one commit. That's okay, I'm gonna review the push. I hit push and I'm good. Now, I'm gonna go back to um, the website where I'm looking at my, um, my uh, page here. And let's see, I'm gonna try refreshing this to see if that works, okay. Um, in a minute, what I should see is that I'm actually going to um, be able to see the scores for this MP available on this page. Right, so once that uh, commit finishes grading, which it will in just a second, um, so what's happening right now is the, you know, the system is, uh, you know, fetching the code, it's grading my submission, and then when that completes, the submission should be visible here um, as a submission to the MP0 checkpoint, um, assuming that everything is working um, according to plan, which maybe it's not. Oh, there it is. I was about to stop this. I was thinking, oh, something's broken. No, 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 there it goes. Okay, so it's currently being graded. Like I said, this can take a minute or two. So, you know, information is flowing around the interwebs. So now I have a commit that's being graded. So our backend servers are retrieving the code that I just submitted. We're running the grader and the test suites on the code that you've provided. And in a minute, your score will be available. My score in this case will be available. Um, so again, this can take a minute or two, uh, particularly if you do it at kind of a busy time when right before uh, a deadline or something like that. But we do try to provide you with feedback about the process so that you can you know, have certainty that you know, your, your code is actually being evaluated properly and, and so on, right? Um, again, you don't have to do this every time you, uh, uh, your score increases. Um, Okay, and there it is, right? So now what I see is that I have added my ID to id.txt. Um, I submitted at 404 today, and it was graded a few minutes later, right? And you see output from the grader, and this is basically the same thing that you would see um, if you ran it locally. It's a little bit different because uh, you know this is done in a different environment. Um, if something goes wrong, there's output here that can help you uh, diagnose uh, the situation. Um, and figure out what, what's happening. Um, and in a minute, I'll talk about some common uh, sources of problems. Um, okay, so, so good. I've submitted, I've got 10 points on the MP. Very excited about it. All right, let's go back to the code here. Um, now, don't leave this window open. I see people all the time that just seem to have this open uh, for no reason. You don't need to have this open when, um, when you're not committing things. So just go ahead and close it, and then you can go back to work. Um, now, common sources of problems with this workflow. So the biggest source of mistakes early on we see is that you did not add your ID to id.txt. What'll happen in that case is that you'll push and just nothing will happen. 
because we need that information to identify your repository. So first thing to double check is open up id.txt and make sure that the ID in there is correct and that you've cut and pasted the whole thing. Sometimes people only get part of it, doesn't work. Okay, second thing that can go wrong. Now, now this time we've, we've added, actually added some, um, some features to help with this, right? So I ran uh, the grader and it, it ran and increased my score. Um, a common mistake people will make early on, sorry, the cat decided to join me. Are you gonna help? Don't push any buttons. Um, a common mistake early on is that people will make changes to the test suite and think that this is a way to get points uh, or they'll do this by accident. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm not implying that this is intentional. So let me go ahead and comment this out and then I'll run the, the test suite. Normally I would expect to have two tests failing at this point, um, but now I see that only one test is failing and it's because I modified the test suite. Now if I run the grade task, let's see what's gonna happen. So I try to grade. Um, okay, now what you're gonna see here is that there is this task called check fin test fingerprints and what it's detected is that you've modified the test suite. So this has been a source of problems in previous semesters. And so we finally built a little more intelligence into our grading tool to be able to detect when this happens. So if this is the case, then you have a couple of options. You can get, you can go back and get your original copy of the test suites. In this case, I know what happens. So I'll just undo the change. You can also use Git to get a fresh copy of the test suites if you need. Okay, now let me try running the grader again. And now you'll see that test passes. So this is an additional check that we've put in to help you because if you make a change to the test suite and you're able to run the grader, what will happen is you'll submit your changes for official grading and you won't get the score that you think that you have deserved because we're using the real test suites and you're using something else. So, but we've tried to, to defend against that this year, but it only, that test is only run when we run the grader. The reason is we want you to be able to experiment with the test suites at other times, make changes, put additional logging, comment out certain tests or whatever. So, so that's an okay thing to do. But once you're actually starting to run the grader for official points, we're gonna run that check to see if the test suites have been modified um, and warn you if they have. Okay, so um, if you run into other problems submitting, please come talk to us. We've seen it all at this point and we, we can definitely, one of the course staff can definitely help you out. The biggest thing to do though, is to do this early so that you iron out the problems. Once you have id.txt set up properly, once you have an understanding of how to work with the test suites, this is pretty straightforward and this is something that you'll just get comfortable with and it'll just work, right? And you know, if you are running late and trying to submit right at the last minute, that can work too, but it's not a good time to find out that you don't have your submission uh, system configured properly. So do this early on, get those 10 points, you know, develop a, a sense of confidence in the process, and then going forward, all you have to do is repeat those steps. Commit your changes, push those changes to GitHub, look at the website, wait for those uh, changes to show up. But again, don't ever stop and think you're done until you see the grade you've earned on the website. If you do that, you know, uh, typically what people find is that they're very disappointed because they thought, oh, I thought I finished, and then I closed the Android Studio and went to bed, and what I realized is I forgot to push my changes and ended up losing points because the deadline was that night. Even though I was done hours early, I just forgot. So always make sure you see that grade up on the website before you think you're done, right? That's the only way to know what your official score is.